Hello Mayday family, how are you doing today? And for those of you that are new to my channel, my name is Mayday. I'm a licensed counselor with a YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me. So today I wanted to talk about a, a topic that comes up a lot, not only uh, within the scope of the clients that I work with on a daily basis, but also just in general. And that's the topic of marriage. And I want us to talk a little bit more about what marriage really means because from what I've seen, most people don't really understand what it means to be married. They don't understand the true concept behind marriage and what that actually means. So most people have this traditional definition and view of marriage. They view marriage as two people are in love, so they get married, right? So it's the natural progression. You get married because you're in love with someone. And that's what most people think. And it's not your fault or the fault of most people if they think that, because that's what society has basically marketed for a very long time. However, that's not the truth, right? That's really not the truth of what marriage is. The truth of what marriage is, is a little bit more interesting and less uh, less on the fantasy realm, more on the realistic realm. And it's, it's, not, it's not as fun, I will say that, right? So let's talk a little bit more about what that means. So what typically happens with individuals is most individuals find someone that they get along with, they fall in love, they get the butterflies, and then in a few months or a few years, they decide, I love this person so much, let's get married. And they get married, they sign their name on that piece of paper, and then two, three years later, they start having issues and start wondering what happened. How did things change? How did things, how did things go this route? How did things go this way? And so, you see that repeat itself over and over and over again. And it's really sad to see because what's happening is most people, you know, at least 90 to 95 of our population, if I had to guesstimate, it's that high, are not making the decision to get married based on correct information. And that is a problem. A lot of times when you make such a decision and say, oh, I'm going to get married, you really need to make sure that you have the correct information. And what's happening most of the time is people think they have the correct information, but they don't. And that's the most dangerous part is that it's very hard for you as an individual to recognize when you don't have the correct information, especially if you feel like you have the correct information, right? So what most people don't know is that marriage is not something that you should get into because you love someone. That's not, that's not the correct, I mean, that's not really helpful. It's not a helpful response and it's not the ideal response to you loving someone. You can love someone, but that doesn't and shouldn't correlate or directly lead to marriage. It just shouldn't. Um, loving someone has very little to do with marrying someone in reality. And that's what that's where most people get it wrong, I will say. That's what most people struggle with in their mind to understand, right? Because they've been they've been thought a certain way of thinking throughout their whole life and essentially have become followers of that thought process, that same mindset. And so it's very hard for them to break out of that. But the first thing to recognize or realize is that just because you love someone does not mean that you marry that person. <laughs> Those two do not directly correlate. There is not one happens so you know, natural progression or the next step is the other, which is marriage, love and marriage. It's just shouldn't, it doesn't work that way. And if you think it works that way, that's why you end up in these situations where you love someone, you get married, and then a, a few years in, 10 years in, 15 years in, you find out 
this isn't what I thought it was going to be. I actually was happy the first few years and now it sucks. So that's the first thing to keep in mind. Next thing to keep in mind is that when it comes to marriage, we're talking about a business contract, right? If you're talking about legally getting married to someone, that is nothing more than a fancy name, marriage, that is coined for a business contract. That's nothing more than a business contract. And the problem nowadays is that there are a lot of poorly written business contracts. If all you want to do is commit to each other, have the ceremony to celebrate your love and your decision to commit to each other, have the ring to represent that, that's great. But when you start thinking about signing that piece of paper, you need to understand that you just crossed over into another realm another dimension okay and so the dimension that you have now crossed over into is a legal contract dimension a societal construct right this is a societal construct of a legal documentation to where they will hold you legally responsible for this action so you really need to think about that and you really need to think about the contract that you're signing so a lot of people get married, they sign the marriage certificate, and that's it. Two, three years down the line, or however many years down the line, now it's a mess, right? You're fighting for custody, you're doing this, you're doing that. And so basically, at the beginning of the marriage, when you first signed the contract, you did a very poor job of making sure that that would be a valid contract, a helpful contract, right? It was just a, a bad a badly formed contract and so that comes around and bites you in the butt years later if you find out oh it's not working out i want to move on i want to do something else then it becomes this mess of a process and this is one of the biggest reasons why a lot of people choose to stay married because the hassle of getting a divorce is just so much that people would much rather just not have to deal with it but this is where that comes from. So most people, instead of spending time making sure that that contract is as detailed out as it needs to be and thinking as much as possible about possible future events to make sure that that's included in the contract before signing it, they don't. They just kind of say, oh, hey, we love each other. Let's sign this contract. When, if you stop and think about it, that makes no sense because you love each other that's something that pertains to feelings you signing a contract that's a legal that's something that's that's legally binding that's that's very separate from how you feel you know what i'm saying so as a business minded individual you don't just walk in if you if, for example if you're wanting to invest in a product you're not just going to walk in and have a five minute conversation with the individual. This is at least a business savvy person wouldn't do this. Wouldn't just walk into the room after setting up a first meeting with the individual that created the product, spend five minutes talking to the individual and then say, okay, I'm gonna sponsor that product. Where do I sign? And then proceed to sign on the dotted line and sponsor the product for millions and millions of dollars. No business savvy individual does that, right? Um, it doesn't work that way, right? Because if you're going to invest your hard-earned money into something, you need to know everything there is to know about that product. You need to do forecasts. You need to see what the potential is. You need to do tests, things like that. And then all of that information will help you in writing the contract, if you're still interested in that product, in writing the contract that you feel is best suited for that particular product based on the information that you've gathered it's the same thing with a marriage because when you get married to someone it's not it's that doesn't mean that you um are loving the person you love the person or you should be love the person regardless of whether or not you're getting married to them right so the whole point is that you, you, you fall in love with this person and now you want to get married to them. So there, those two do, don't really, don't really uh, correlate directly like most people think. So what we're, what we're missing is the homework that should be done before signing that contract. And most people just go in, I love this person, so I'll sign the contract. And then they find themselves in a very difficult situation later on. 
So the main point in this video, if nothing else, is to remember that, listen, marriage is a legally binding contract. <laughs> It doesn't, it's not a situation where if you love me, you'd marry me. No, it's not that. It's literally the fact that I love you. That doesn't really have much to do with these this legally binding contract that we're going to sign, right? And the legally binding contract part should not dictate whether or not you love the person. That That's a separate issue entirely. That's a separate issue. Uh, on its on its own, right? So it's almost like a subcategory. So if you're gonna sign a contract with someone, definitely make sure to think about that two, three, four times. Because back in the day, this wasn't so much of an issue. This wasn't something people would, would question. They would just kind of roll with it because they just didn't really do a lot of introspection uh, as much when it comes to this particular topic, especially because of what the media and the government uh, tends to propagate but nowadays you really want to make sure to do your homework the divorce rates are super high they've been very high for a long time and even worse I hate to see it but it happens all the time where people are stuck in marriages that they're very unhappy in so apart from making sure to do the appropriate work as objectively as possible as far as how you actually feel about this person because you might think you love them but when you start looking at the facts as opposed to the fantasy that you've created in your mind you find that that's not so much the case most people also don't do that so that's also a very big issue but that's a def that's definitely a different issue to be covered in, in, in another video but apart from that before we get into this contract, we're not thinking about this as a contract and we should be because that's what it is. Because if you think about it, if you don't have to get married legally, you could really just have the wedding ceremony. You can have the party if that's something you've always dreamed of and the white dress and everything else and have fun to celebrate your love. never understood why people were so adamant about lumping those two things together. Uh, so I did a lot of a lot of thinking on this and just because of the field that I'm in and things like that This is the conclusion. This is what I'm seeing happening the most, right? So when you love someone you don't have to be married to them if you don't want to be like legally, right? Legally, they put this fancy title on it to make you associate that with the feelings that you have for this person but in reality and logically, those are two completely different concepts. You can love someone, be with someone, commit to someone without signing your name on the dotted line, which only makes it harder for you if people change later on or feelings change later on. I know you in the moment are not thinking, oh, feelings will change or people will change. Well, then if that's a fact, then why do you have to sign off your life on, this, on the dotted line on a contract that you haven't reviewed, you haven't, you haven't put in the work to build, you, you know, so those are two different things. And so I think primarily the most important take on this particular video, because there's so many other aspects to this that we could talk about and that I'll be exploring in future videos. But most importantly, the most important thing is to remember that marriage is a business contract. Don't get distracted by the fancy name and the alluring name marriage. I don't even know what's so alluring about it. I, I really just don't get what's so alluring about it. Is it having company for the rest of your life? The same company for the rest of your life that's that alluring? Whatever. Fine. If that's alluring to you, that's fine. But don't get that confused with or don't let them trick you into getting that confused with having to sign your name on a piece of paper or on a dotted line or anything like that. Because let me tell you something, when reality starts hitting and people start changing and you start, you know what I'm saying? Like you start flexing and things like that, you're going to realize really quickly that you probably didn't do the amount of homework that you should have done. So as long as you start with the, with that understanding and fully understanding that, listen, marriage, that fancy name, sounds nice, right, is a contract. <laughs> 
That's what it is. It's a contract. So you really need to take ample time to think about that. However, when you love someone, if you want someone as a partner and you want to commit to them, you don't need a legal contract to do that. You should really be doing that because you want to and that's how you feel. And so therefore, you shouldn't need a legal contract to validate that, right? Uh, so just keep that in mind as, as the very least have a basic understanding and a basic knowledge of that, right? Also, there's other factors that play into this. Each person's economic status, for example, is going to play into this. For some people, it is better for them to sign up with you and sign their, the, their name on the letter line with you because they're wealthier. The, the person that they're with is wealthier than them. So it's more beneficial for them to just sign a random contract, but it's it might not be more beneficial for you. Or if you guys are in the same uh, socioeconomic status, right, then now we have to look at, okay, what if something happens? So there's just all these other there's just all these facets because it is a business contract that you have to think about it as a business contract. Now, if all you want to do is commit to each other, have the ceremony to celebrate your love and your decision to commit to each other, have the ring to represent that, that's great. But when you start thinking about signing that piece of paper, you need to understand that you just crossed over into another realm another dimension okay and so the dimension that you have now crossed over into is a legal contract dimension a societal construct right this is a societal construct of a legal documentation to where they will hold you legally responsible for this action so you really need to think about that and you really need to think about the contract that you're signing Okay, that's about it. Let me know what your thoughts are. What do you think about this? Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. Comment below. I want to know your thoughts. Do you, do you think that's right? Do you think that's not right? Is, is there a perspective that I'm missing? Uh, but let me know what, you, what your, your thoughts are on that. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.